one second. Thank you. So my name is Natalie, like I mentioned before, and I just want to talk to you briefly today about the Mature Student Success Series workshops that we offer at our center and the services that we provide to mature students. Um, so we have workshops, and these workshops are to help you build your skills for university courses or anything that you write in your essays or um, maybe note taking, things like that. So some of the workshops that we offer um, are social workshops or social cafe hours, we call them, where you're able to come in and, sorry, I shouldn't say come in, we do it virtually via Zoom. You're able to meet other mature students on, on campus. And it's just a pretty, it's open. There's sometimes it's themed, sometimes it's not, where you're able to come in and meet other mature students and ask any questions that you might have. And those are actually run by our peer mentors. So you get to meet our peer mentors at those sessions as well. We also have student parents get togethers. This started last year where we created a space where uh, student parents can come in and just talk about what's going on at that time in, in their life, or maybe juggling school, work, uh, kids online learning, um, things like that. You'd be able to just have an open space and be able to talk about those things. We have meditation sessions for mature students as well, where every Tuesday and Thursday, we do Tuesday mornings and Thursday afternoons, we're able to come in and um, come online and do meditation with a counselor from um, Student Counseling Health and Wellbeing. We also have um, Cultivating Resilience and Self-Compassion uh, for Students, Citations 101, Learning to Learn Remotely for Mature Students with Families. Those are some of the, the workshops that we offer. Now I'm going to go on to our Mature Student Peer Mentoring Program. We have a great peer mentoring program that we offer where we have third and fourth year level students that you'd be able to come and meet and just have a conversation, whether it be, you know, I've been out of school for 20 something years, I haven't been in school for quite some time, what do I need to know to get back into reading, note taking, um, how do you juggle uh, all, all the things that you have going on on your plate, can you give me some advice, study tips, for example, they would be able to assist you with those and we're doing one to one appointments, those are done via Zoom at the moment, and Hopefully, as we go back and we get, we get on campus, we'll probably be able to do some of those in person as well going forward. Um, we also have a mature student first year experience program that we offer at the Center for Mature and Part-Time Students. This program is for first year students who are returning after being away for quite some time. It's made up of, um, it's a free course. It's, it's on E-Class. It'll be there if you're, if you're interested in applying for the program or enrolling. You, you could just uh, fill out a form and you could send me an email. I'll be able to help you with that. And what it is, it's made up of various different modules um, that our director, Brian Poser, has created with some of our colleagues on campus. For instance, Learning Skills Services and the Career Center and um, Student Counseling Health and Wellbeing. And you're able to go through these modules on your own throughout the year. No one is there telling you have to be there on Tuesdays. There's no specific date. There's no specific time. You do it at your own pace. And a lot of students like that. And it's skill building modules you'll be able to find there. So if you're interested in that, just email me after I'll be able to help help you uh, find out more about that. So that's about it for me. I'm going to go to the next slide, please, Sabina. So now I'm going to introduce our peer mentors who are actually going to be uh, facilitating the main content of the session today, um, important resources and deadlines. We have Sabina Goranova and Alexandra Stone. Uh, Sabina is our work study student with ACMAPS uh, for this year. Alexandra is our peer mentor. Sabina is doing um, going into her fourth year of communication studies at York. And Alexandra is uh, a sociology major in her second year. So over to Sabina. Hey everyone, and um, thank you for joining us. We hope you find we hope you find this session useful. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what Brian mentioned earlier. This document that we're presenting will be shared with you as a PDF, so all the links will be there. Um, and you know, be mindful of the time. We want to make sure that you see that you see what we have to offer, but um, it's it's there for you to click when you receive the document. So. Um, we can't show you all the links, um, but we will talk you through the document. Um, so I'll take you through to the first part of the um, of the resources page. And uh, let me see. Uh, hopefully everything works, but this is a technology for you. We'll see. Um, so first of all, um, on our list is the um, You Better Together site. So this site is... Um, it's all about the updates of safe return to campus and 
this includes, I will try and open it and show you. And if it doesn't work, um, I apologize, but hopefully you can see. Um, this site has all the resources and it's the most up-to-date information on anything you need to know. Um, can you guys see the site? Great, thank you. Um, so yep. if you keep, um, once you bookmark this page, you can uh, have a look at, uh, we will be coming into level two, um, I believe, and this will show you what the restrictions will be, what buildings will be open. And the link here is top 12 ways that York is welcoming um, you back to campus. And these are all the different ways that it's making the campus safer. So um, I hope you take the time to look at this and this is the best way to just um, stay informed. Let me go back to the presentation. Um, the, in terms of some of your courses will be online, some will be in person, depending on what you've chosen. So you can check this, is, is my course in person? This is a definitive list and I believe it gets updated with um, a list of all the in-person classes that will meet on campus. Um, and equally, the current students page, if you are studying online and you don't have the technology available to you, you will be able to see um, there's various methods that you can do for um, to prepare for online learning, um, the different tools that you might need to download, um, the different platforms that you'll need access to, um, this can be found on the um, current students page and then university information technology, which is uh, this site here, basically, oops, apologies for that. Um, it shows you um, how to get access to all the software that you would need um, and including the cloud, the drive, the office 365. Um, and the bottom link, the last link you see here is to the library. So the libraries obviously has things like book borrowing, but it also has laptop borrowing. Um, at present, this is not available during the, this, the rest of the summer term. However, from September, you will be able to see, you will be able to see um, a full list of ways of how you can borrow a laptop. Um, okay. So in terms of the academic resources that are available to, to students, uh, many of you have already enrolled. Maybe you've had your first appointment with um, an academic advisor. I wanted to show you this. This is the academic advising page. So each, uh, each faculty would have their own way of uh, find, booking an academic advising appointment. So if you visit your own academic advising office, you have a way of, um, depending on your faculty or college, you have a way of booking a virtual appointment for now, um, depending on your program. So this will be the, that's the link that takes you and helps you um, navigate to that department. Uh, again, we have academic petitions, um, if you have any, any kind of issue with your degree. The degree progress report is something you will refer to as well as um, it's something that the academic advisor will take you through as well, where you can track as a checklist what you have completed, what you still have to complete. So this link will take you to your page. You will need to sign in with your own passport your details. Um, but it's a good reference point to go throughout the year when you're planning um, when you're planning your you know your next uh, your next semester or your next year. Um, and we also have the ESL Open Learning Center, which provides English language support um, to ESL students. So uh, next kind of things we have the the learning commons. So. The Learning Commons is a collaboration between a number of services mentioned that I will mention, um, such as the Writing Center, the Library, um, and it, they basically help with any of your academic research needs. And you will see here in the Learning Commons, you have the links to the individual 
entities, so the libraries, the writing center, ESL Open Learning Center, learning skills and the career education and development. Um, this is a very useful resource when you're trying to, um, you know, find something or um, how to improve writing skills or something along along the way. Um, we go back. Um, and again, the libraries, as I mentioned just now, this is um, part of the, the learning commons. Learning skill services, sorry, I just skipped one. Um, this is a service that provides you with one-to-one -one assistance, different programs, um, different workshops that they carry throughout the year to basically help you learn better and to manage your time. So I strongly recommend using it because it just helps you with, even if you think your, answer, your question is silly. Um, and Writing Center, you can also book, um, they do seminars as well as one-to-one -one sessions at the moment virtually, uh, and they can help you, you know, better ways of taking notes, better ways of reading academic material, which, which can be plentiful. Okay. Um, printing, these are kind of the resources that you would need. Um, at the moment, they're not available, so printing, oh, it, you can print remotely if you're on campus, but I believe you need to um, you need permission to come onto campus. So from September, this will be your reference point uh, for printing on campus. You can print at the library or at the um, YFS, so that the building there would um, they have the YFS office, which is near York Lanes, um, and you can go and print with your USB stick or send something and they'll be able to print out um, things out for you uh, when then operating normally, of course. Um, program changes, again, it's self-explanatory. If you are changing from one degree to another, this is your reference link. Spark is something that's part of, um, you will find the link to it from the libraries page. I, I find it, I use it daily whenever I, I write essays, it helps you with your citations. Um, it helps you um, writing and researching best practice. And I have here the Student Community and Leadership Development or SCLD, as you'll find it referenced. Um, they offer, again, a connection for students to do, um, it, it links your skills, resources, programs, and tools available on and off campus. So if you're learning remotely, you'll still be able to access them. Um, and the study hub, this is something that would be relevant, I think, um, more in person, although I think they are doing some virtual groups. This is, um, it's like a, a connection page where you can find groups for your particular class that might be meeting together to study together, um, to revise for examinations. Um, and the academic resources, so for um, each college, so you will be associated with a particular college, um, they have their own peer assisted study sessions. So you can join those by selecting either of these links, depending on which college you are part of. Um, and they're facilitated by students. All right, next slide, sorry. Okay. Um, quiet study spaces are currently unavailable at York U libraries because of the pandemic. However, um, for the four winter arrangements, um, again, follow this site and, and you'll be able to do bookings when they become available. Alternatively, there are sites um, that you may not need the booking, so there are separate seating areas within the new student center. But again, you need to find out which buildings are accessible and what the restrictions are, um, and this can be found on this site or on the You Better Together. And I can show, so the visual schedule builder, um, you might have already used it if you were enrolling. Um, if not, this is basically a, a visual platform which helps you add your courses, shows you any clashes, shows you which tutorial group you've signed up to. So you will be using this in the coming years when you're enrolling. Um, and the York University card. So I wanted to show you this site, hopefully it will open. 
Um, so at the moment, you only they're only issuing physical copies in person if you go on campus, if you need to be on campus. Again, you need to follow the protocol for attending campus to get this done. So if you need to be in person, you can go and get your um, YU card done. Your YU card is basically your ID for campus, um, for any printing, for any bookings, for the library, you will need this card. So if you go in person, you do. However, at the moment, they're doing a photo upload service. So if you don't need to be immediately on campus, you can actually upload your card and it will be emailed uh, or mailed to you, sorry. Um, and if, again, if you need to renew anything at the moment, it's on, um, it's on here. So again, you can book a virtual queue um, here to book your appointment. And I think it's, yeah, definitely, it's something you definitely need, but whether you need it to go in person or not, that's, um, that's up to you and your course requirements. So do keep an eye on that. Um, so Ustart is a new student transition program and it helps you to get the most out of your first year at York University. Again, it's something you should check, check out um, for sure and work at it through, um, at your own pace. And the Yorkie Bookstore um, provides books, stationery, and resources for all your needs. Um, you can search the catalog by the course number to see what books are required, or wait, better wait till your professor in the first lecture tells you what books are required. In some cases, the list might be outdated, or the, the, the professors have been providing a lot of material. Um, without you having to buy the book. So it's always best to, to, to probably wait. Um, and you can also buy merchandise such as hoodies, t-shirts, um, stationery, and currently at the, at the moment, it's only online that you can actually buy things. And now over to Alexandra for the rest of the community support slides. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to this presentation. And I'm going to be carrying on by talking about some community support resources at York University. And I'm excited to talk about this because a lot of these have helped me personally. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is weird. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Um, so first, we have the Assistive Technology Lab. Um, so this offers services to all students who are registered with Student Accessibility Services. So if you have any kind of um, disability and you are registered with Student Accessibility Services, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, I would highly recommend. I am actually registered with them. Um, and it's just very helpful. I've unfortunately never been to the Assistive Technology Lab just yet, but from what I've heard, it sounds amazing and it sounds very helpful. Um, so it will help you with anything like tech related, like, you know, if you need any help with reading something on the computer or listening to anything, it, it, that's, um, that's the resource for you. Um, so I highly encourage you to look into that. Um, so the career education and development, um, this offers career support services. Um, so if you need help with any bleh, career building skills, like how to write a good resume or anything like that. They have workshops for that kind of thing and they can connect students with career opportunities. So if you're somebody who's interested in looking um, ahead in your future to your desired career and how to get there and some skills that will help you along the way, um, that's where you wanna go. Um, so daycare, so mature students, um, a lot of us are parents. I am not. I have a dog, but you know, I don't need to send my dog to daycare. But if you have a human child um, <laughs> um, and you're looking into daycare, we all know how hard it can be to be a mature student, especially um, when you're trying to balance your life as a parent and as a student and if you're working any of those things. So daycare is going to come in handy for that. So if you're interested, um, we have some links displayed up here. I don't know if anybody wants to take a picture or anything like that. So if you're interested, we have two daycares on campus um, and you can contact them directly through their websites. So we have the YU Cooperative Daycare. So this is at the Atkinson Residence Building. And we also have the Lee Wiggins Child Care Center. And this is next to York Lanes. Um, 
So yeah, I would highly encourage you to look into that if you are a mature student and a parent and you need a little bit of support, York is there for you. You don't have to do it alone. Um, you can always look into a daycare. Um, health education and promotion. So this influences healthy living strategies on campus, which can be used for academic support and beyond your time at York University. So these are things that you can also carry when you graduated and um, a lot of skills that, you know, as a student, sometimes we get stressed out and we, <laughs> you know, might not make the best choices when it comes to our health. Um, so you don't want to compromise that for your, you know, academic life as well. You want to try to find that balance. So this is another way that the your community is going to support you. Um, so yeah, so there's that too. And the next slide, just give me a second here. All righty. Hold on a second. Okay. So more community support. So we have our mature student housing. So this is York Apartments for mature students and students with families or who are parents, like I talked about earlier. Um, student accessibility services. So this is all virtual for now. Um, and I highly recommend you to register with student accessibility services as quickly as possible. So, because there's a little bit of a process with getting your accommodations and everything that you need. Um, and, you know, somebody will talk to you on the phone and you have to fill out an application and get all your documents. Um, so definitely don't delay doing that because it's something that's really going to help you. Whatever your accommodations are, they are amazing at finding ways that things can be, you know, altered for you when you're taking tests or exams or if you have an assignment, you need a little bit more time on. Whatever you need, don't be afraid to register with Student Accessibility Services. Um, cause this is something that like, I would not have gotten the success that I had academically if I didn't. So I really, really recommend doing that. Um, so if you require registration for any ac accommodations made within your course due to disability, you need to register here to get assistance throughout the course and your exams. So for example, if you need assistance with taking notes or you have any medical exemptions, or you need extra time on exams. And I know in person, there's options for if you need a quiet space during your exam. Um, but unfortunately now, because we're not currently on campus, maybe things will change um, in the near future, but that's not really an option for now. But still, if you need any extra time, or if you need extensions or anything like that due to a disability, um, that's where you wanna look into. So student counseling and development, this is also very important. So this is going to offer you support services for the well-being of students, whether it's mental, physical, anything like that. So this is also currently online and you have access to fully qualified and experienced counselors, as well as a number of workshops such as mindful meditation, um, which is also a really good one. It's offered by ACMAPS. And um, yeah, so definitely recommend that. Again, we don't want to compromise our you know, our well-being for academic success. We want to try to find the balance, which is what it's all about. And sometimes that can be hard. And again, you don't ever have to try to figure that out on your own. This is why we have these resources. Um, so yeah, if you, you know, don't ever be ashamed if you need any counseling or if you need any extra support um, in uh, regarding that. All right, um, the student engagement team facilitates the introduction to a wide array of student-run clubs and organizations. Um, so this was previously located in Barry Hall on campus and the kiosk is now virtual until further notice. So again, if you are interested in clubs or student-run organizations, um, I definitely recommend that. It's a great way to meet people and network and make friends. Um, it definitely enhances your academic experience at York. Um, so yeah, that's what the student engagement team is for. So it'll connect you to some of these resources that you might be interested in. All right, so next slide. Okay, we're good. Okay, so go safe and security services. So this was where staff members accompanied York U students to and from on-campus locations. Um, and the York Youth Safety app is currently available. Um, so it's not currently, the Go Safe team is currently not in operation because of COVID and everything being virtual. Um, but if you do um, feel like you need some extra support, 
um, with going on and off campus. If you need to be escorted, you can still call security. Um, but you should check back on the page for updates um, once we return to campus about this service. Um, so keep me safe. This provides international students and students residing outside of Ontario with access to free real-time and appointment-based support from anywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter if you're in Canada or not in any language. So you, have, you should visit the site for more information about how to get in touch um, and parking services. Um, we all know parking can be annoying sometimes. <laughs> um, so parking services at York has launched a new structure for paying for parking to allow for flexibility due to variable schedules as well as easier payment methods using the app. So parking permits will be available, including daily and seasonal. Okay, next. All right. So these are community support services that focus on inclusion and support for everyone. So Good to Talk is a free confidential helpline for Ontario post-secondary students. So it's, you know, your typical like phone support type of thing. Um, and uh, from personal experience, I've used it and it's great. The counselors are wonderful. They're very understanding. They're respectful of your privacy. So again, this is all about, you know, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed to, uh, we all have experienced the stress of especially being a new student, but being a mature student or a transfer student or an international student, whatever it may be, that comes with its own challenges as well. And whatever you're going through, um, there are these resources amongst others, but good to talk. Um, like I said, from personal experience, it's like you can't go wrong with that one. Um, and it's specifically for post-secondary students in Ontario. Um, Office of Student Community Relations. So this supports students impacted by critical incidents facing personal crisis by providing advice, referrals, and training. And the center, so this provides a safe space to help educate, respond, and empower victims of sexual violence. And then the trans, bisexual, lesbian, gay, asexual at York. This provides services and a safe space for York's queer, trans, and asexual community. Um, so yeah, there's resources for everyone and whatever you need, um, there's support for you. And that's what's so great about York. Okay, um, community services. Okay, so the YFS health and dental plan. So most of the time you're automatically enrolled to, re to um, receive this um, coverage, um, but you can opt out if you have insurance already from, from your work or from anything else. Um, so the opt-out period is typically September to October at the start of the academic year. Um, and if you look on the website, uh, if you look on the web page, it has details about how to opt out and it's all done electronically. So you can just do it online. Um, so yeah, um, I would recommend that you check the web page for 2021 to 2022 details. And why you hire, York U's hiring platform where full-time, part-time, and work-study positions are posted. So if you're interested in a work-study position, if you're interested in some kind of um, job or career at York, whether it's full-time or part-time, um, that's what why you hire is for. Um, and that can be a great opportunity for you, again, to meet people, to get some career experience, or if you're just looking for like a summer job or something like that, that's also an option. Okay. Am I reading financial services too? Um, I, that's fine. I can do that. Okay. Is there any? So just the last few resources, I think, um, that you should be aware of. So the student financial services, they're currently online um, and available virtually and by phone. For um, So if there's anything to do with your OSAP scholarships, bursaries, tax forms. 
you should be able to access everything through your student online account um, and through your profile. So make sure you keep that updated. Um, again, just follow the links um, that we send you in this document. And this is basically some of the important um, links that you need to keep an eye on because um, the semester, um, I, I could show you, but I think we're probably running tight on time. Um, but uh, this link shows you the important dates. Um, you, you select your semester and it will show you the registrar's office for the official dates for things like um, dropping courses, uh, getting a refund, getting uh, enrolling. Um, so it's very, very important to keep an eye on that. And there is also an option there to import the calendar into your own Google Calendar, which I often use just to keep my own calendar up to date. Um, the refund tables, again, this is linked to the important dates, but it shows you by uh, the, different, the different categories of, uh, depending on the semester, when you need to drop something to get a refund and when you drop a course and you don't get a refund. So keep, keep an eye on that for your particular, for your particular semester. And the transfer credit statement, this is a reassessment and further information about how to transfer previous study to your York University courses. So again, all of these links will be mailed to you in a PDF document. And now I'm um, back to Navni. Thanks, Sabina. Okay, everyone, we're almost there. A um, couple of, maybe half an hour or so left or so for our session today. So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a um, panelist session with two of our peer mentors from this past year. Um, these are two new peer mentors with ACMAPS. And so I'm just gonna ask them a couple of questions back and forth with regards to their experience as mature students on campus so that you can hear their story, see their perspective as mature students. Maybe you can relate, maybe you'll be able to book an appointment with them in the future um, if you have questions with them. So here, we're, here is where we're gonna start. So we have Paul Gardell, who is a BCom student at York University. And we have Jennifer Tran, who is a health studies major at York University. So I'm going to start with Jennifer and I'm going to go back and forth with a couple of questions. So Jennifer, what brought you to York University? Hi, everyone. Um, so when I was deciding what school to go to, I actually called a handful of admissions office just detailing my my circumstances and what their what kind of what they were offering and York was actually the only school that encouraged me to apply um, because I am a full-time student I uh sorry a full-time employee I think that was the one thing that a lot of universities were like mm, I don't know if you can handle that so um don't apply to us type thing um but York was super accommodating they actually offered to help me um, find out what programs I was interested in. They were able to kind of show me like a sample template as to what um, a student's schedule looked like. So I think that's why I chose York ultimately. Um, they also, why I decided to return to school was that I had a lot of goals and career, um, yeah, a lot of goals growing up. Um, however, financially, I wasn't able to, um, make that work for me. So I actually have been working since I was out of high school. And I think in order for me to move myself further in my career, I obviously had to obtain a degree. And so that's why I'm here. Thanks, Jennifer. And Paul, what about you? What brought you to York University? Okay, well, I, that's, a, that's a really good question. I was working for about 10 years with a manufacturing company as a junior accountant. And I wanted to be promoted, but I wasn't being promoted. And I had been working with the same company for over 10 years. And uh, so uh, because I wanted to get a degree, then I decided to enroll at York University. And so now I'm preparing for, uh, I want to be a financial accountant. And so that's the reason for which I am here at York University. Thank you, Paul. To the next question, uh, back to you, Jennifer. What was your experience as a mature student on campus? And this year I has think, been interesting, so. 
So pre-pandemic, when we were in person, I was really nervous, um, only because I was like, everyone's going to see that I'm super old, you know, I'm not going to fit in with everyone. However, I think I learned really quickly after attending numerous orientations, even um, the mature student orientation that you guys are attending, I attended that myself. Um, I found out that a lot of people actually thought I was just coming out of high school. <laughs> so it was a good feeling. But um, as, a, as a mature student in my classes, I found that it was very helpful because I did bring a lot of depth of information of experience that I've had into applying my knowledge in my courses. So I think that was the one thing that I, I, I definitely take away from being a mature student. Thanks, Jennifer. And over to you, Paul. What was your experience as a mature student on campus virtually this year? Yes, well, my experience as a mature student has been very positive. First, uh, I, uh, I needed some resources to do my assignments and to prepare for my exams. And I found out that the Scott Library provides all the technology, all the resources that students needed to do their studying, their assignments, and to prepare for the exams. So for me, uh, that was more, more than I expected. And in this year particularly has been very, uh, I have received all the, all, the support, all the support that I had expected because all the online courses have been very effective. Uh, York University has provided all the online courses very effectively. So um, my experience has been very, uh, well, more than I expected, I would say. Thank you. So as both of you are mature learners, so as a mature student learner, time management plays an important role at post-secondary. How do you deal with juggling various roles and managing your time? Jennifer. Um, so me, I am very disciplined with my time management. Luckily, I don't have any kids or um, many distractors in my household, but I also work from home full-time um, with managing a full-time school schedule as well. So I think I have to be very structured with how, the way that I stru um, structure my school schedule around my work schedule. and don't like to combine the two, um, obviously, because I have commitments elsewhere. Um, the only thing that I would like to deal with juggling with all the things that I have going on, I schedule myself so that, you know, when I'm working, I'm working. When I'm in school, I'm in school. And usually all of my courses were remote, remote this year and asynchronous. So I didn't actually have to attend class at the scheduled time that was on my schedule. Um, the other thing that I would do is I would actually leave my house and I would find a park. I would sit in my car and do all of my assignments and homework. That way it's a change of scenery and um, it kept, kept me focused only because I'm in my four walls all day long. It's, it's kind of nice to be able to leave the house and do my work elsewhere. Paul, over to you. So how did you deal with, or how do you deal with juggling various roles and managing your time? Okay, well, all of a sudden, I see that I'm, I have a family life and a university life, and that is very complicated. And for me, to me, my family life and my university life was just equally important. So it was very difficult. But then I had, I quickly learned that I had to balance my family life with my university life. And so um, it's not easy, but uh, you just have to learn to balance your family life with your uh, university life. For example, if you have somebody ill in the hospital and uh, you have to be there with your family and you have an assignment to turn in tomorrow, you, you cannot do it. So you have, to, you have to learn to prioritize what is more important to you. And you know, an assignment can always be postponed and your family life is something that uh, has to be, well, you have to consider it yourself. So I just had to learn to balance my family life with my university life. And look, okay. I have something here. I have a, this is my calendar. 
and it's my best friend. And I have to check it every day to see what I have to do the next, within the next four weeks. If I don't see it on a daily basis, I'm not happy. So. Thank you for that, Paul. That's very important. I think we all would agree. Um, calendars are very, very important nowadays. Um, so the next question I have, I'm being aware of the time as well. Uh, did your mature student experience teach you something that you did not know beforehand, Jennifer? That's a good question. Um, and I think what I didn't know before coming into university was that it's not easy. University is extremely stressful. And if I were to go to, you know, I feel like if I were to go to university coming out of high school, it would have been a completely different experience. Um, now I am more aware of, you know, your marks are definitely more important, especially if you want to get into professional or graduate school. Um, your courses are your courses. You have to actually enjoy the degree that you put yourself in in order to be successful. Don't pick a degree that is, is a degree just because. I, I highly recommend anyone who, who picks a degree and is iffy about it to reconsider and find a, a degree that you would more likely enjoy. That's the one thing that I learned. Thanks, Jennifer. And what about you, Paul? Well, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question again? Uh, did your mature student experience teach you something that you did not know beforehand? So before you came to school, I mean, what's new? Well, yes, uh, before, actually the first day I came on campus, I was feeling very, a little bit uncomfortable because I thought I was the only mature student on campus and I was feeling uncomfortable being around the younger generation. I was very shy about that. But then I quickly learned that there were other mature students on campus. In fact, uh, right now there, there are about 6,000, over 6,000 mature students registered at York University. So that made me feel more at ease when I learned about that. Thank you. And just two more questions. Um, we are slowly transitioning back to campus. So some classes are in person, some are online and blended. How did you deal with online classes? Because some people in this group will probably be taking most online classes or perhaps both. But how did you deal with online classes? Is it doable from your perspective? And how have your professors helped you? So over to you, Jennifer. Yeah, so like Paul, I live by my agenda. It is my life. It's my savior. Um, I mark it as soon as all of my syllabus has come out for all my courses and I write down all my due dates, timelines, things to do for every week, every day of the week. Um, and I follow it to a T. And uh, online learning is definitely doable. And if it's if it's not doable, your professors and your TAs are definitely the people to go to as they are the ones that are teaching the course. Um, you can attend or arrange office hours with your professors to go over any questions you have. They're there to guide you and help you with any questions or any inquiries that you're stuck on for your courses. Um, you can also email your professors. A lot of my professors emailed me immediately after. Um, so they're there, they're there as your resource and they're definitely the people to go to if, if you have any questions about your courses. And same question for you, Paul. Uh, yes, well, to tell the truth, I did not find much difference between attending my Zoom classes with my in-person classes, being in a classroom. And that is because uh, in, during the Zoom classes, we were able to interact with our professor. So that means I could make a question to my professor and the professor can reply to me back instantly. So to me, I, I, I found no difference. In fact, I found that uh, the online courses were very effective. So is it doable? Yes, it is doable because I did very well. I succeeded all my courses. And I noticed that there are a lot of advantages to taking online classes. So uh, it is doable, yes. 
Thank you, Paul. Last question. Um, what advice would you give incoming mature students, Jennifer? Um, my advice would be to do what you can with the skills that you have and don't force yourself to burn out um, because of your course load. Your mental health is most important during this transition and throughout your university time. Seek advice from other colleagues and know that there are other members who may be feeling the exact same way as you. Thanks, Jennifer. And Paul, what about you? Okay, well, it's, it, you know, uh, just to be very honest, I don't want to disappoint the students, but we have to be realistic here. University is not really a piece of cake, as we say it. University is a serious matter, and we have to take it seriously. And um, now there is a saying that is a little bit old, but but if we take a look at it, is it is it can work. And the saying is, when there is a will, there is a way. So, uh, so I I encourage students to stay focused be positive and uh, if, if you do that you are going to succeed in your endeavors in university. Thank you so much Paul and Jennifer I greatly appreciate you sharing your stories with us today and hopefully the new incoming students uh, can um, relate to you and take your advice. Um, so we're over to York University Mature Student Organization, YEMSO. So this is a club on campus for mature students, and I'm going to invite Binish. Uh, she is one of the representatives from YEMSO. We could speak on what the club is, what they do, and services they're going to be offering. Um, and hopefully we can uh, have about maybe 15 more minutes of your time, 10 to 15 more minutes, um, and then we'll be able to wrap up the session. So go ahead, Binish. Uh, hi all and welcome to York. Um, well, YAMSO is a York University Mature Students Organization and uh, it was originally founded with the role of mature students helping each other understand the complexities of the university. And then later its role expanded to include helping mature students adjust to and enjoy the back to school experience. Um, we offer mentorship and advice, provide a quiet space to meet and study, help uh, in communications and networking. So uh, basically the purpose of a cl the club is to provide uh, student parents a friendly uh, environment on the campus um, by creating a community where a student parent can socialize, relate and share what's important to them. Uh, we try to uh, you know, prepare events where um, we actually fall under act maps and uh, we try to uh, coordinate events with them or individual events where you as parents of and being students can actually meet others that and get clarity about what real time problems others have and how they are handling them and uh, have some fun moments in between. Um, uh, we have it in the pipeline and once, uh, you know, this whole COVID thing gets cleared uh, in fall, you'll be seeing us uh, bring to you some family events also. We like to involve, uh, because of course we understand that you as parents have responsibilities and uh, as mature students, you have responsibilities. Uh, and I keep saying parents because I'm specifically linked with that side of it. Uh, but yeah, all mature students are uh, there and uh, we create family events. Uh, it can be on campus, it can be online, like playing some games or discussions and a lot of things. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of us in um, fall, hopefully. So, yeah. Thanks, Binesh. Next slide, please, Sabina. Okay, so coming to an end, our Zoom E-Class Student Tutorials, we have sessions that are upcoming in August that ACMAPS is offering. For students who are new to York University, we're gonna give an in-depth student tutorial training session on Zoom and E-Class. So E-Class is a platform that York uses that houses all of your classes. And we're gonna teach you how to navigate that if you're interested in any of those sessions. Um, they are on August 25th. August 31st and September the 2nd. Um, you can check out our events page in order to register for those if you're interested. I'll post that in the chat when I'm finished. Uh, Sabina, next slide, please. 
And so we're at a point in time, we're going to get to our connection activity in a few minutes, um, but we have a little bit of a competition or a wheel of names, like a fun thing to do right now. And so what it is, is we have um, put all your names, we're supposed to be attending the session today into a wheel of names, and we're going to spin, Sabina's going to spin the wheel. And we're going to have uh, two people out of the session today win a gift card to the York University bookstore. And so if whoever the winners are, if you can just kindly private message me your email address, and then I will send you the gift card. So Sabina, over to you. Thanks, Avani. I know there's um, a lot of people here that registered, so I'm hoping, sorry, there we go. I'm hoping we don't spend too long doing it. <laughs> Risi Vivek, are you here? If you're here, put your name in the chat, please. Otherwise, I can spin again. Are you here? David McDowell. Is David still here? Was he here before? Yep, David's here. Great, David. So you're our hey, first winner. Nice <laughs> Congratulations. Can you private message me your email address, please? Zakaria Yakub. Is Zakaria here? Can you just type yes in the chat if you're here? Mm. I know some people left early, so it's. Uh... Sengis, are you here? Please say yes in the chat if you're here. <laughs> Just try to keep an eye on the chat here. No, okay. No, hopefully, lost one. Someone is here. Carly White, are you here? Oh wait, let's give it a couple, let's give it a little bit more time. Carly, if you're here, can you please put your yes in the chat? Okay, guess not. Go ahead, Sabina. Because we have two cards, right? Two cards. <laughs> I don't know if she is, but I am. <laughs> Cameron Zahid. Cameron, are you in the in the meeting? Type yes in the chat. This is what happens when? I know we had to put the names of everyone who registered um, at the beginning. <laughs> okay, what go is... ahead, Sabina. One more time. I have one more card. That's why. Samia, Samia. Come on, people. Mia, are you here? Please put yes in the chat. <laughs> okay. Come on. Uh, one more time and then we'll move on and we can come back to it. I feel like this is going to be the good one. I feel it. I can feel it. Because you want to do the connection piece. Chloe Sims. Now, I know Chloe. Chloe was here earlier and I was chatting with her. Yes. Hey. Okay, Chloe. Yay. <laughs> You're right, Alexandra. <laughs> Okay, Chloe, can you private message me your email address, please? And at the end of the session, I will send you guys your e-gift cards to the York University Bookstore. So at this moment in time, we're just going to take 10 more minutes of your time. We have an icebreaker activity for everyone. And this is the basically a, a fun part of the session. Um, we're going to ask you to go into breakout rooms. And I'm going to put everyone into a randomly into breakout rooms. And how many people do we have? 64. OK. And in this breakout room, what I would like for everyone to do is just get, get to know each other as mature students. And ask you in the session, just uh, answer the questions. Why did you return to school now? What is the program that you're in? And what is your passion? Um, and so the peer mentors are gonna go in between the rooms if they can, and just try to, to have conversations with everyone and hoping everybody gets a chance to speak in the session. And if you're comfortable enough 
and you're okay with, if you want to exchange emails, please go ahead and do so. This is the purpose of the session is to get you to connect and get you to meet others so that you get a little bit more comfortable um, being at York University. So I'm going to randomly, give me a minute, put everyone into breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. right. so it's going to invite you to the breakout room please say yes and accept it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's going to be about 10 minutes You put me in a room um, with Alex, so I'm just going to find another room to go into. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I can tell you, you can go into room two. There's no mentor there. Two or one. I'm guessing some of you who are here, you don't want to join a breakout room. Do you want me to move you to another room? Let me know.
is your group done, Jennifer? Or One more minute and then I'll um, bring everyone else back. How did it go, Jennifer? Good? Uh, good, yeah. yeah. Some rooms were smaller. Story. Yeah. Some rooms were smaller than others. And I didn't want to close anyone down. So <laughs> one minute for someone's talking and then, you know. <laughs> no worries. Till them to 13 and then back. All right, I closed all the rooms, everyone will be coming back. There we go. Did we lose some people in that transition back? We had 60 something, I think, to go in and we have 24 now. Okay. Um, I think they're still they're coming. still coming. They're still coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So I think we have everyone back here. We have 42. Okay. Um, so that was our icebreaker. So I hope you all enjoyed that little meet and greet piece that you got to connect with some mature students at York University. You're all starting new for the fall and hopefully you find it effective. Um, just a few wrap up notes for me. So just a great big thank you to our students who attended today. Um, and we're hoping the information that we provided has been helpful. This will be um, emailed to you uh, after the session. I will be sending the PDF uh, file of the presentation along with an evaluation form. If you can kindly take a few minutes to fill that out, that would greatly, um, we would greatly appreciate it. And um, a PDF of the orientation package that the bookstore has sent me that I will share with you in navigating their website and how to get your books and things like that. I will also send that to you. And congratulations again to the two winners in our group today. I will be sending you the information with the e-gift cards to the bookstore as well. A special thank you to Sabina, um, Alexandra, and our peer mentors, Jennifer and Paul, and also to Benish for representing Yumso. Um, and if you have, we, we, I'm sorry, we're going to be here for a few more minutes if anyone has any other questions uh, for the Q&A, um, and we'll be able to answer them. But please be mindful that we may not be able to get to all of your questions. And if you do have questions, you can private um, email me at acmaps at yorku.ca, and I will be happy to um, respond to your email there. If you have questions, you can call me at 416-736-5770, and I will be able to assist you as well. So for the formal uh, part of the presentation, we've come to an end Right now, I'm going to stop the recording and then we're going to go into the gallery view um, and we'll go into the Q&A here. Just give me one second. Thank you again for attending. <laughs>